Since the dawn of time, Cubers have wanted to get together and talk about their latest solves, show off puzzles, and just do anything related to cubing. For a while now, there have been competitions and meetups, but what if you can't get to those? Well, the internet has your back, and for a lot longer than you might think. The 1980s had an explosion of cubing clubs across the world, but a lot of them could only really talk to each other via the post. Obviously, this was slow, expensive, and hard to talk to multiple people at once, so people quickly turned to the newfangled internet to electronically mail each other. Extremely high tech. The first known online group was the Cube Lovers Mailing List, started in July 1980. For those too young to remember, a mailing list is one of the most primitive types of forums on the internet. You send an email to a server, and that server sends it out to everyone else on the mailing list. It sounds clunky, but it works pretty well, especially if you don't have much bandwidth, like in the 1980s. The Cube Lovers mailing list was very active for quite a number of years. There is some fascinating stuff in there, from finding the highest order possible for any algorithm on the 3x3, to the first discussions of God's number, to the rumoured and mysterious 4x4 cube. There are full archives of the list available in multiple places on the internet, from 1980 all the way to 2000. The list has been shut down, so this is the only way you can read them now. Near the end of the mailing list's life, a little website appeared called the Twisty Mega Site. An Australian man named Wayne Johnson was interested in creating his own puzzles, but there wasn't much information available at the time. After researching, experimenting, and tweaking, he posted his results on the web in 1999. Very quickly, he received many emails from people in the community wishing to know more, Rather than a mailing list, however, he decided to set up a forum. Around the same time, the Virtual Puzzle Museum was beginning to kick off. This was a website where, although you couldn't buy puzzles, you could see pictures and details of nearly every single one out there. It was run by Denny Dedmore, also known as Cubologist. Both websites ran fairly independently for a few years, bouncing between domain names before discussions started about merging them together. By this time, the Virtual Puzzle Museum was run by Sandy Thompson and renamed TwistyPuzzles.com. In early February 2004, the sites were officially merged, and they run seamlessly together to this day. A couple months after the Cube Lovers mailing list was shut down, Chris Hardwick started the Yahoo group Speed Solving Rubik's Cube. This could be considered the moment when the cubing renaissance began. Much like the old Cube Lovers list, you could email the server and have messages sent back, However, it was much more convenient to use the Yahoo website itself in most cases. It shows a time capsule of the beginning of modern speed cubing, with people talking about trying their best to average under 30 seconds, or the holy grail of sub-20 average. Again, you can see the dawn of some bits of cubing history, from the first descriptions of human thistlethwaite, to discussions of a possible non-profit organisation for competitions, to complaints about Yahoo deleting two years' worth of discussions. Hmm. Puzzle discussion forums have been on the internet for a very long time, and they're not going away. In fact, most cubers don't even use any of these forums anymore, preferring different places entirely that sprung up long after these sites were entrenched in the cubing community.